Last week, as I was reading a tweet that somebody had posted in Twitter about his childhood and the fact that he was very fortunate not to have been injured given all the places that he played, I had a lot of memories coming back to me about what it was like growing up in the rural environment that we moved out to when I was about four or five out on the border of Wales and Delafield. Delafield now is pretty built up and actually the subdivision that we moved into is now like totally developed and, and even the other areas that we played in are, are now turned into these complexes of houses and roads. But it wasn't like that back then. And, you know, I think for a lot of us in the generation that that I'm in, especially those who, who grew up in rural areas, if you look back on it, we're, we're pretty fortunate that we didn't get more injured or damaged or whatever you want to say than we did. And so I'll tell you a little bit about what it was like. And I'm not saying this really to, you know, to, to convey that there were a lot of challenges in childhood or, oh, I'm so lucky or, you know, that our parents were, were neglectful or anything like that. It's more, you know, I actually had a really enjoyable time much of of uh, my childhood, except for, you know, clashes with other kids and worries about that. And of course, you know, my uh, grandmother and my, my dad dying. Um, but the environment that I, I grew up in was really quite, you know, quite nice in, in many respects. And I'll also say that in, in some other stories, I'll tell you about what it was like in northwestern Indiana at the time, which is where I spent a you know a good portion of my summers staying with my grandparents or my great aunt and uncle. Um, but I'm just going to talk about what it was like growing up on Glacier Pass. So we moved into a subdivision that, like I mentioned, was on the border of uh, a township and a village. The village isn't much bigger than than it was back then, the village of Wales. And that's actually where I went to school for my elementary school. And we, we even had a, a phone number that was from a municipality further south called Genesee Depot. That's how out in the sticks we were at the time. And then there was Delafield. There was the town of Delafield and then the township of Delafield. And, and legally we were in the township, so we had that kind of address. But what it meant was we were in a subdivision. And when people hear subdivision, they think of suburbs and they think of these, you know, sort of homogenous spaces. And that's that's not really what subdivisions were like out in the sticks at that time. It was something where a farmer would have sold off some property that they just weren't using, probably had gone to, to seed and gone fallow for, for quite some time. And it would get subdivided into lots and then they would put kind of winding roads that would go around. And this was a place where people would generally buy lots that were about an acre in size and then build a house. And we moved out there in 75. And when we did, you know, our house was at least on the outside completely finished. But the yard was, of course, like totally torn up and, and needed to be finished. And we did that over years, you know, putting down sod, uh, planting grass, doing landscaping, all sorts of things along those lines, much of which my dad and, and I did together. And um, the inside of the house was, was in some respects finished and in other respects not. We didn't get carpet in, in most of the rooms for quite some time. And it was so cold that winter that I remember my sister and I huddling under blankets uh, by the, the heat vents, you know, just to stay warm. But it was, it was a good place to be. And the, there must have been some sort of economic dislocation or disruption or something like that because very few people moved into the subdivision right away. We were one of the first um, families to be in what was called the Hills of Delafield, right? And so, you know, our house was plunked down and then there was, there were the Schmitz and there were, uh, the Shankies way, way off in another place. And I think there were a few other ones, but it took years for 
the the lots to start to actually sell and people to start to build the houses and something like a neighborhood to actually develop. And as it did, you know, you would you would play with the kids that were there unless um, they were you know too problematic in one way or another. And there were a few kids like that in the neighborhood, but for the most part, you know, you'd play with the neighbors that you had. And I remember like walking to Jeff Van Meter's house. Jeff was a year older than me. And they, they also had a daughter in that family who is my sister's age. My sister's about two and a half years younger than me. And, you know, it was about a quarter of a mile walk. I could walk down the road or I could just walk right through the prairies to where uh, Jeff lived. And then he'd, you know, knock on the door, ring the doorbell and ask if somebody could come out to play. And, you know, playing was was basically finding things to do for for most of the day and so you know i mentioned that that there were a lot of things that could be considered hazards so let me tell you a little bit about it but first let me sketch out what the environment was like so that area is called um the kettle moraine area you know we, we were actually in the kettle moraine school district and kettles and moraines are these these geographical features, you know, sort of like dips and hills and all sorts of cool stuff. So there's there's all this not really rugged terrain, but there's like ups and downs everywhere. And there's no like single, it's not like there's a single hill in the middle of a plain. It's just like hills and valleys all over the place. And, and uh, it, you know, it was, it was wooded in many places and prairie and other places with grasses growing and lots of flowers and you know you would find things like old barns and barbed wire fences marking off certain areas and quite a quite a lot of the um, woods and prairie were probably fields originally that had just been allowed to go go back to the natural state um, that area had been you know, farmland for, for quite some time. And it just kind of, you know, went back to, to nature. And so you'd find silos that were kind of falling apart and all sorts of cool things for kids, not particularly safe, of course. I mean, there were, there were a lot of boards that had, you know, old rusty nails. So our parents were, I think, perpetually worried about us, like stepping on a rusty nail. You'd hear about that quite a bit and then getting tetanus. Um, and you know it was it was interesting because they're just you'd wander around and that's what we did. We got to know our environment by wandering along deer trails and and other trails that got established. Sometimes we had bikes to do so. Sometimes we were just hiking, and we often made our own trails as well. Behind our house and most of the other houses on Glacier Pass, there was this this large you know ridge line you call it it's essentially like a long hill and it was all sort of forested but it wasn't it wasn't like old growth forest necessarily although there were some pretty big oak trees in there and some other things as well but lots of honeysuckle bushes and sumac and you know you'd find random stuff growing in, in different places at other at certain points the forest got you know thicker and denser and darker and so we would just you know, like I said, just wander around and see what there was to see. Um, in other places, there were these cool trails that, that went through the, the meadows and the brushland. And, you know, we would bike along them or walk along them. And, you know, we would essentially, especially in summer, be turned out at after breakfast. They'd say, all right, it's not raining. We don't want to see you until lunch. Get Be here, back here at lunchtime. And then, you know, you'd have lunch, you know, wash your hands, eat some lunch, maybe have a snack or something as well, like an apple, um, you know, drink plenty of water. And then they'd send you out again and you wouldn't be back generally until dinner time. And the adults were pretty cool with that so long as they had some vague idea of what you were doing. And so, you know, there were all these territories that each had their own kind of character to them that we would we would explore. And like I said, sometimes blaze trails or do other things along those lines. And we would range for miles and miles and miles. Sometimes we'd get hungry and we'd, you know, uh, take mullen and, you know, pull open the, the stalks and chew on the pith. Or if somebody had a snack along, we'd, we'd share it. 
although that was kind of infrequent. If we walked a long ways and we actually had some money, we could stop at the Kickapoo store and buy candy or beef jerky or something like that. But it wasn't all that often that we actually had any money, so that wasn't, that wasn't done that frequently. And, you know, there were old rock piles that farmers must have put together at certain points. Sometimes we'd actually find a, a stone fence. A lot of times we'd find these, these posts that were almost, you know, falling apart with barbed wire stretching along them. And the barbed wire would be incredibly rusty and sometimes broken in places. And we'd, we'd push it down or we'd hop over it. And so... You know, we, like I mentioned, we ranged over a huge area. And the one thing that we were generally told not to do was to go on or cross the highway. There was a state highway, 83, which didn't really have that much traffic, but I suppose when it did have traffic, you really had to watch out because people didn't, didn't drive slow along it, and there was some truck traffic. And we, we weren't supposed to go across that, and we also were not supposed to... If we went down further, we weren't supposed to cross um, Highway 18, although we, we often did these things. As a matter of fact, I remember by the time that I was 10 years old, me and Jeff Van Meter and Jay Laramie riding our bikes all the way down Highway 83 <laughs> to go to Genesee Depot and, you know, kind of puttering around there and buying some candy and then coming back up, you know, our parents would have been very angry if they'd found out because it, it was slightly dangerous. But, it, you know, you could sometimes be on that highway and it'd be five minutes before a car would go past. Right across Highway 83 was Ethan Allen School for Boys, which sounds kind of nice, but was actually sort of like the maximum security juvenile prison. So we were supposed to stay away from that as well. But, of course, we, we went down there, too. Um, so not least because there was a really cool hill that we could go down and it was all wooded. And so it was kind of, you know, nice and, and, and temperature controlled and dark in, in the summer, but we didn't go near the actual prison. And so this was what our, our, you know, summers and a good part of our weekends and other times were like exploring, you know, finding out about nature. I probably learned a lot about woodcraft through doing that. Every once in a while, you'd find wild fruits that, you know, like blackberries, for example, and, and you take your hat and you just, you know, fill it up with, with blackberries. Parents weren't usually happy about that because they stained the hat, right? But, you know, or you could do it with your shirt. Again, not, not too happy about that. And, you know, there was so little supervision that almost anything could have happened. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you another uh, part about that. At one point, there was actually a pack of wild dogs that were going around, and there was another subdivision that was much more established. It had probably been founded in the 60s uh, across the highway, and they were attacking other dogs in there. And, you know, a bunch of dumb kids. We were, we were told by our parents, don't go too far in the woods, don't go too far away because, you know, you might run into them. And we just got a bunch of clubs that we, we made ourselves from, you know, tree branches. And, and we were like, well, if we run into the dogs, we'll, we'll take care of them. Obviously, if we had, we probably would have been in real trouble. But very little, you know, very little happened. I mean, sometimes you'd twist your ankle and it'd be a while before you could get up. Or, or there'd be times when you might do something dumb and get the wind knocked out of you. We also did have rock fights every once in a while. Um, I remember getting hit by a, by a rock here and, you know, bleeding quite a bit and then like, you know, beating up the kid who'd, who'd thrown the rock. But for the most part, you know, it was um, pretty, it was pretty safe, remarkably safe what we were doing, given all the kind of crazy stuff that we were doing. Again, with no adult supervision, just on our own, sent out to explore the, the natural environment and to explore these, these old decrepit, you know, barns and uh, silos and, and places like that. And I remember really enjoying that. I think that's where I got um, a lot of my love for hiking from and uh, learned a lot of woodcraft, not by somebody actually teaching me, say in Boy Scouts or something, but just by observing. After a while, you kind of know how trails go and what to look for and 
what plants do what. And um, yeah, so that was something, you know, quite, quite remarkable when you look back on it. I, I think there's many other kids who had similar childhoods and, and could tell similar stories. Um, but I think that nowadays, I know that this is also the case for, for me and my kids, you know, when they were little, I wanted to know where they were all the time because we're, we're in a very different environment where um, there are seemingly so many more dangers and challenges and we want to keep track of things much more. So it was really a, a different time and a different way of growing up. And, you know, I, I think there's plenty of people who live like that today, but um, I think that maybe a lot of kids miss out on that and miss out on the opportunities that being able to wander day after day after day over large portions of territory actually provide. So there, there's my story. There's really not much more to it um, other than to say that occasionally, you know, we did get hurt, but fortunately none of us got hurt to the degree that uh, did any really lasting damage. I will say one other thing as well. Oftentimes the getting hurt would involve being on a bike and try to do something kind of silly with the bike. You know, we had dirt bikes and go down hills that were a little bit too steep and then wipe out and, you know, you'd get banged up and all that. None of us had helmets. None of us had, you know, elbow or knee pads or anything like that. So we're, we're probably fortunate that we came out more or less okay. <laughs>